Hey there, I'm Ari and I'm a bartender and a bourbon guy. Uh, so let me tell you, I've been on a lot of bourbon tours and they all talk about the same things. Um, they're all fascinating, they're a lot of fun, uh, but it's really kind of the same each time. Um, so in this video, I, I hope to walk you through everything and just cut to the chase. Uh, and maybe save you some time. I, I definitely think you should go to bourbon tours, go on bourbon tours. Uh, they're a lot of fun. You learn a lot about the distiller. If there's a bourbon you like, definitely go visit the distiller. Uh, that's a good thing to do. And you do get to see how they do their spin. So um, this will also come in handy if you find the need to talk bourbon uh, and what you might have learned on a tour. So basically, at all bourbon tours, they talk about five things. Number one, what is bourbon? Uh, and then number two, what is whiskey? And then number three, how is bourbon made? So they walk you through, oftentimes they'll show you uh, the whole process, lots of walking, sometimes very walking in a very warm room. <laughs> uh, and then they show you, um, and then sometimes they explain why they're different um, some distilleries will even show you the barreling and bottling processes, which is actually really cool, uh, especially larger operations. Old Forester is pretty cool about this, um, and so is Rabbit Hole Distillery. But you know, it doesn't have to be in Kentucky. You can have a great distillery tour anywhere, and bourbon's made anywhere in America. We'll get to that. Uh, and then some distilleries even have extra experiences, like Buffalo Trace has ghost tours and I think a, a sandwich shop. It, it was closed during COVID, uh, so I wasn't able to go there, but I had heard about it. So let's answer all of these. If you have additional info or cool things to share, please let me know in the comments and like all YouTube channels. Please like and subscribe. I've got a lot of videos coming, uh, especially around teaching. Uh, teaching folks about bourbon, whiskey, more. Uh, we'll do tastings. I'll walk through things like rye whiskey, uh, wheat whiskey, uh, the differences between all this stuff. So please join. Um, so anyway, let's get started. Uh, items one and two. What is bourbon and uh, how does it relate to whiskey? Well, let's start with whiskey. Uh, it's grain spirit aged in barrels. <laughs> that's why it's brown. Um, you get that from the char in the charred barrels, uh, but in, in the beginning, like practically every spirit, it comes out clear. Uh, so what's bourbon then? Well, bourbon is whiskey. <laughs> uh, similar to mezcal and tequila, all bourbon is whiskey, but not all whiskey is bourbon. Uh, it, it all comes down to the rules. So here are the five rules of bourbon. Number one, it must be made in America. It's America's spirit. Uh, number two uh, is the mash bill, uh, meaning the grains that make up the spirit must be 51% of corn or higher. Uh, usually you'll have a high amount of corn, um, then rye or wheat, uh, and then some malted barley, usually. Uh, the, the corn adds sweetness, uh, the rye adds spiciness, the wheat adds a smooth character and lets other parts of the spirit shine through. Um, and the malted barley is like a bonding agent uh, and can even add a chocolate note depending on how much malted barley you've got. Um, now, number three, must not have any additional flavorings or colorings. So this means it can only be the grain spirit, the barrel, and time. That's it. Uh, there's a gotcha here with finishing in another barrel. Um, that's for another video in the future. <laughs> but that's a, that's a whole thing. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing, but whatever. Uh, now, number four, it must be aged in new charred oak barrels. It does not have to be American oak. It can be Japanese oak. It could be French oak. Uh, it just needs to be oak and it has to be new. New oak barrels. Um, the char 
brings out the wood sugars. So if you understand how char work, works when you're trying wood, uh, brings out wood sugars. Uh, and this is where the popular bourbon, vanilla, and caramel notes come from. Uh, and then as the temperature changes and the spirit goes in and out of the wood, it picks up that golden brown color that you're so used to and the vanilla and caramel notes. Uh, it's also, of course, where it gets oaky flavors, uh, sometimes leading to people calling a bourbon over oaked. If it's been in there too long, um, there's, there's just uh, read reviews and you'll, you'll see where people talk about it. Um, now, number five, uh, it must be distilled to no more than 160 proof and it must enter the barrel at no more than 125 proof. Uh, it also cannot be bottled at less than 80 proof, uh, at least to be called bourbon. And there's ranges here. It doesn't have to be exactly 160 proof. It doesn't have to go into the barrel at exactly 125. Um, it's just, these are the guidelines, uh, but they can't be, they can't be broken. Um, now, if you're wondering what proof is, it's the government's way of measuring alcohol content. Uh, it's simply twice the ABV. Uh, alcohol by volume. Um, so if it's an 80 proof bourbon, it's 40% alcohol. Divide by two. Uh, the term proof came from shysters uh, scamming people back in the, the good old days uh, about the n amount of alcohol in their spirits. Uh, so one way that they were able to prove the, uh, uh, the amount of alcohol in there was using gunpowder um, and the, um, that became proof and uh, <laughs> the term stuck. So if you want to learn more about that, I'm, I'm sure there's a, a billion videos and search results, uh, but you can look that up online. Um, now, uh, I'm not sure if I should say that it's a, it's a rule. It, it goes back and forth, you know, when I, when I learn about this. Um, so I'm going to add one more, which is it must be aged at least, at least six months. Uh, I, I've heard various rules around the timing. Uh, but the consensus from all the tours that I've been on has been it needs to be aged at least six months. Um, the size of the barrel doesn't seem to be a rule. You know, there's 15 gallon barrels, there's 30, 35 gallon barrels, there's 50 gallon barrels, but the age uh, seems to be a sticking point. Um, now, to be fair, I, I don't know why you'd want something that's six months old um, or less than that. Uh, it just hasn't been in there long enough. If it's in a, a very short barrel, that's a, a smaller barrel, like 15 gallons, you can get um, more flavor in a shorter amount of time. Um, but hey, you know, drink what you want the way you like to drink it. I'm not here to judge, friends. Now, uh, you'll also hear about bonded bourbon. Uh, AKA bottled in bond. Uh, this adds a few rules because years ago, uh, people weren't honest about spirits and they, they, they cheated, uh, similar to where proof came from. Uh, people got sick, they went blind, uh, they even died. So the US government added some rules. <laughs> uh, the Bottled in Bond Act, I think, believe is what it was called. Um, it added some rules to ensure that you could trust your drink of choice uh, by adding oversight. And with bourbon, um, the, the rules that were added were, number one, the, the spirit must be distilled by a single distiller in a single season in a bonded, AKA government approved warehouse. Um, number two, it must be aged at least four years. It doesn't have to be exactly four years, but it has to be at least four years. Um, Number three, it must be bottled at exactly 100 proof or 50% alcohol. Um, now, this does not mean single barrel. I think some people might think, well, bottled and bond must be single barrel. No, it can still be blended, but it still has to be from a single distiller in a single distilling season. In modern bonded warehouses, um, you'll actually see cameras and more. Um, and if you're in Indiana, where I am, uh, you can stop by Old 55 Distillery uh, or Spirits of French Lick um, <laughs> or South uh, and just check out their bonded operations and get some great bourbon too.
Now, uh, now that you understand all the rules, uh, let's go over how bourbon is made. Uh, it's actually very similar to beer. Uh, number one, corn is selected uh, and the other grains such as the rye and the wheat. So you determine the mash bill. Uh, then everything is milled. Number two, everything is milled to powder uh, and put in warm water uh, with yeast, not too hot, not too cold. You don't want to kill the yeast. Uh, and fun fact, the yeast is often a well-kept secret of the distillery. Uh, it's, it's very preserved, uh, sometimes for over a hundred years. Uh, so it's very distinct. Uh, yeast is a big deal. Uh, the yeast eats the sugars, turns them into alcohol, uh, and then what's left over is alcohol and distiller's beer. Uh, the beer is thrown away, the alcohol is kept, and uh, then using the distillation process, which can either be column still or pot still, um, the alcohol is purified, meaning that the methanol and other things that are bad for you are removed. You'll also hear about heart cut, tails, center cut, etc. cetera. Um, but basically, you're only leaving the drinkable grain spirit at the end. Now, um, after this, we have our unaged bourbon. It comes out clear. This is called White Dog or White Lightning. Um, you'll see that for sale at stores. That's just uh, corn whiskey or whatever this mash bill is, uh, unaged. Then uh, a barrel is rolled over. Uh, remember, a new charred American oak barrel. Oh, pardon me, a new charred barrel. Not doesn't have to be American oak. Um, and the bourbon is inserted uh, using a hole called the bung hole. <laughs> uh, and then a bung plug, tee -hee, um, is used after the spirit has filled the barrel. Uh, they then roll that barrel over to a rick house which is just a big warehouse where many barrels are stored uh, and it starts to age. It might be temper control, temperature controlled, it might not be, uh, but the point is that it's going to start aging and um, having various temperature shifts. Um, and that brings the spirit in and out of the wood and then as it goes in and out, it gets that caramel color or that, that brown golden color plus uh, the caramel and vanilla notes and, and various other characteristics. Uh, and then years later, uh, you have hopefully good bourbon. So <laughs> why do I say hopefully? Well, this is where uh, particular jobs like uh, master distiller and master taster come from. Uh, they, they come in and they fine tune all of this. That's a topic for a whole nother video. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can talk with some people and maybe get some additional answers there. Um, so there you have it. Uh, every bourbon tour and what bourbon is and when I wrote the script, I was hoping it would be about 10 minutes. So I, I haven't checked to see if I hit that goal, but uh, hopefully I did. We'll see. Um, so uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Tell your friends about this channel. Uh, let me know what you thought in the comments. Uh, and any videos you'd like to see. I, I love talking about bourbon, spirits, whiskey, drinks, mixing, anything. Um, I've got hundreds of bourbons here at home, so I'll probably be doing a, a number of tastings and, and publishing those. And I've got a lot of information to share, um, having traveled the world and enjoyed many great bourbons and spirits. Uh, thanks, and see you next time. All right, I have some updates for you. Uh, so after some of these videos, especially those with a lot of information, uh, there may be things I want to add or corrections. And rather than making a very skippy video, <laughs> I'll uh, just add it at the end. Um, so here's some updates. Number one, malted barley is not a binding agent. Uh, it's just used to kick off the fermentation process. Um, I was asked, what is a mash bill? And uh, what does milled mean when it comes to grain? So a mash bill is the recipe. So the grain recipe, uh, for example, 70% corn, 20% rye, 10% malted barley. Um, and milling grain just means grinding it up, you know, making the, the, the powder. 
Um, and when I say a charred barrel, I was thinking about this. I think I made it sound a little generic. There isn't just one type of char. There's actually four different levels of char. So char level one, two, three, four. The lightest char level is one. Um, and then the, the most char is four. So I hope that helps clarify. Uh, I won't get into what a toasted barrel is in this video. That's really something for a more formal finishing, like barrel finishing. Um, conversation, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a future video. That's it uh, for the updates in this video. Uh, see you next time, and thanks for watching.